and really monetizing your expertise. Uh, as stated, I myself am a brand strategist. Um, I consider myself an infopreneur and we'll learn exactly what infopreneurship means and what it is within this presentation so that you can begin like your, your journey into infopreneurship as well. But with all of that, I just want to get started with going over just a little bit about who I am. You've already given me an introduction, um, but just quickly going over uh, the experience that I have within this arena. So as stated, I am a brand strategist, meaning that I help people to build a strategy behind their own brand so that they can begin um, having a personal brand, number one, but also monetizing their expertise as I have done as well. I consider myself a personal branding maven, being that I've helped um, over well over 100 people clarify some aspect of their brand, whether that is through speaking during workshops like this, one-on-one -on -one clients, group coaching, uh, what have you panels, I do it all. Um, so this speaking and workshop sort of facilitation, this is something that I do pretty often, honestly, um, at least probably two or three times a month. So I actually love giving back just providing information back into the community about how they can really take control and get in the driver's seat of their own brand. And then I also like to mention that um, I am like a tech person because I feel like this really drives the decision making that I do and that I provide to my clients within their businesses because I am a firm believer that all business decisions, all branding decisions should be based on data and analytics, not just our feeling for the day. So getting into that so if we're looking at our goal our goal for this overall workshop i have three goals in mind and i want you to hold me to these so by the end of the workshop we can make sure that we've actually accomplished these goals and that you are walking away with what i've promised that you are going to walk away with so number one i want to define what infopreneurship is and its key differentiating factor between entrepreneurship now, oftentimes when we think about infopreneurship and entrepreneurship, sometimes people think that they are the same, but, and I will say that they are very similar, but there are some key differentiating factors between infopreneurship and entrepreneurship that you must know in order for you to be a successful infopreneur and then go on to monetize your expertise. Two, we want to understand what the various types of infopreneurs are. Um, there are seven different types of infopreneurs, and you pretty much can choose and decide which one will work best for your, the type of information that you are trying to provide to people that you are selling. And then three, just walk away with uh, the three steps to actually getting started within infopreneurship. Uh, because by the end of this webinar, I want you all to be able to get started within this realm and then go on and actually be able to impact others with the information that you also have in your head, just like I am. So if you are ready to get started with all of this, with these three goals, you're ready to identify um, what infopreneurship is, what is the difference between it with entrepreneurship, you're ready to understand the different types of infopreneurs and walk through the three steps to getting started with infopreneurship, I just want you to drop a number three in the chat if you're ready to get started with all of this. I just want to make sure that you all are with, still with me and you can still hear me and you're still following along with everything that I'm saying. So if you're ready to get started, just drop a number three in the chat. Perfect, 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 perfect. Well, then let's hop right in. So what is infopreneurship? When we think about what infopreneurship is, we pretty much, it is the combination of information and entrepreneurship, right? And let me just, I want to try to, okay, don't think I'll be able to do that. Okay, perfect. So when we think about what infopreneurship is, it's information and entrepreneurship combined. So at the beginning, I said that that a lot of people often confuse infopreneurship with entrepreneurship, but it's understanding that when you are in infopreneurship, the primary thing that you are selling is information and the information that you have in your head. When we think about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs can sell services, they can sell products, they can have enterprises, they're leading a team, but with infopreneurs and infopreneurship, it is usually, usually, something that you are doing solo and that you, again, are primarily selling the expertise that you have. So it's really sharing your life experience, the knowledge that you have and or your passion with a niche market. So I wanna piece apart this definition just a little bit further. Sharing your life experience, your knowledge and or your passion. I want you to understand that I did not necessarily say your expertise. 
Because when we say expertise, oftentimes there's some hesitation that comes with expertise because people feel like in order for me to be an expert, I have to have a degree in this. I have to have a PhD. I need to have been doing this for 20 years. And that is not the case. To be an infopreneur simply means that this is something that you know about. So you've either lived through it, you've either researched it deeply enough, or this is just something that you are passionate about and now you are sharing that passion with others. And then even furthermore, the other important piece of this definition is a niche market. What do I mean by a niche market? When I say niche market, I mean a very specific segment of the entire market that you are targeting with your services and your information. Oftentimes, when we think about business, when we think about entrepreneurship, there are a ton of people who say that they target everybody. They say that everybody's my target audience, right? Because let's say, for instance, they are selling shoes. And in your mind, you say that, well, everybody wears shoes, so everybody is my target market. And that cannot be further from the truth. From the truth. When you are an infopreneur, specifically, you need to have a niche market, meaning that you specifically know the characteristics, the mindset, the values of the people that you are targeting so that you can understand how you can more deeply connect with them. Because all this is, all infopreneurship is, is connecting with other people, either one-on-one -on -one or in a group, deeply, deeply in you guys sharing a passion, sharing that expertise. And then one last thing that I would like to mention about this definition, right? Sharing your life experience, knowledge, and or passion with a niche, mar niche market. Nowhere in here did I actually say that you are selling this. And that is the piece of infopreneurship oftentimes that I think people may get stumbled up or caught up on. You don't necessarily have to sell this information in order to be an infopreneur. Now, when you officially get into infopreneurship and you've now decided on the type of infopreneur that you want to be, yes, you can begin making money from it. But I just want to call out that this does not have to begin with selling. And we're going to dive into a little bit about what I mean with that a little later. So when we look at the difference between entrepreneurship and infopreneurship, the common thing that these two pieces or these two concepts have in mind is that it is the creation and extraction of value. Whether you are an infopreneur or whether you are an entrepreneur, you are still providing value to people. As I said earlier, that value could be in different ways, right? As an entrepreneur, you may be providing that with a product or a service, but with, as an infopreneur, for instance, right now, I'm providing you value through just talking to you in this webinar. That is the way that I am creating and extracting the value that I have within my head. So that is the number one piece that I want you to understand. That's the similarity between entrepreneurship and infopreneurship. There is value there and you have to know what that value is. So two, going back into it, right? Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship usually begins with profit in mind, right? When we think about entrepreneurship, typically what do we think about? We think about business and we think about business then what do people think about? We think about money. We think about cash. We think about making a profit, making revenue, right? So with entrepreneurship, this is usually starting with, okay, I want to make some money. How can I make some money? That is usually how it starts with entrepreneurship. Not all the time, but typically that is how it starts. You want to make money. With infopreneurship, you are starting with your passion. This is just something that you want to share with others that you really enjoy doing, learning, saying, or what have you, but it begins with passion and that passion then turns into profit. So that is a key differentiator as well. Entrepreneurship begins with profit in mind. Infopreneurship begins with passion, identifying what is my passion and how can I share my passion, my knowledge, and my expertise with others so that I can monetize it. That is the true difference right there. Does these two make sense as we're as we're going through? Drop a number one in the chat if this is making sense. If this differentiating factor between entrepreneurship and infopreneurship is making sense to you. I want you to drop a number one in the chat just so that I know that you're still with me. Perfect, 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 perfect. Continue to engage with me. This is a conversation. Continue to engage with me. Anytime questions come up, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We will answer them at the end with the Q&A. 
So getting further into the difference between entrepreneurship and infopreneurship entrepreneurship like i said it can either be tangible or it can be in, intangible and when i say tangible that's meaning a product when i say intangible this could be a service right you are providing a service to people let's say graphic designer like they are someone who is a freelance type of entrepreneur but that is an intangible service that they are providing because someone cannot necessarily hold you can't hold a website you can't hold a logo but you can hold a product, you can hold a shoe, you can hold a telephone, you can hold a t-shirt. So those are tangible or intangible products. With infopreneurship, what you're selling is very likely intangible. And intangible meaning this is just what is in your head. It is just information that you are selling. You're not selling, you're not selling uh, the concept of actually doing something for someone or uh, giving them a service. You're really just talking to them, maybe coaching them through something. That is what infopreneurship is. So you're selling something intangible, something that you cannot hold, you cannot touch, or anything like that. It's just you have it, and that is your unique value proposition. And lastly, with entrepreneurship, again, going back into the point that I just made, you are you, this is usually a done for you or a do it yourself service. So a DFY or a DIY service. I feel like we all pretty much know what DIY is. Like we said, it's do it yourself. It's something that you are going to try and just do yourself. And I may just give you the instruction and then done for you with entrepreneurship it is more, okay, I'm just going to do it for you and then you pay me for that service that is entrepreneurship and like i said graphic designers that's the perfect sort of way for you to think about it or conceptualize what entrepreneurship looks like versus an infopreneur done with you you are teaching other be more like you so for instance right now i as stated i consider myself an infopreneur so being an infopreneur right now what i am teaching you is my expertise on infopreneurship my experience i'm sharing with you my experience on infopreneurship and then that how you get paid as an infopreneur you're really just sharing that information sharing that expertise out so how do you actually get started with being an infopreneur right how do you get started with infopreneurship like i said there are three steps that you want to think about when getting started in infopreneurship let's dive into those three steps step one you need to identify the actual information that you want to sell. If you feel like you have some, if you feel like you already know the type of information that you could sell, I want you to drop a number two in the chat right now. If you say, I already know my expertise, I already know that people are going to be willing to purchase this information from me and they are going to pay top dollar for this information. If you already know that, drop a number two in the chat because I, 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 need, to, I need to come to you. I, get some advice from you but one with getting started in entrepreneur with infopreneurship excuse me is identifying that information that you specifically want to sell and we're going to dive into exactly how do you identify that information in a couple of slides but for right now all you need to know is step one and the first part of step one is identifying the information that you want to sell the second part of step one I want you to identify the actual outcome that you provide. So this is where it starts to get a little, a little tricky, a little unclear, confusing, right? Because people say, okay, well, I have my information, but what do you mean by outcome, Precious? What is an outcome? What do you mean outcome that I'm providing? When I say what outcome you are providing, this pretty much means what is the transformation that someone is going to get from gaining the information that you're selling to them. So for me, with me being a brand strategist and me selling information related to building your personal brand and building your brand strategy, the outcome that you get from that is you get a great, I would say, uh, amount or you get a greater sphere of influence when you build a personal brand. The outcome that I'm providing is, okay, you get completely clear on who you are, who you serve, and the value that you can provide to those people. And that outcome is now you have a greater sphere of influence over those people. So the information I'm selling is branding, personal branding, and brand strategy. But the outcome that you are getting is more influence. 
and you have to identify what does your audience want. That is the difference between the information you're selling versus the outcome. And again, we're going to dive into really how to identify all of that as well. So I said, identifying your value and your outcome. This really all comes down to three different statements or questions that I want you to ask yourself or I want you to think about. The first, think about the people who are all, think about what people are always asking you about. I want you to sit and visualize in your mind the last time a friend, a close friend or a family member came to you and they asked you for advice. They, asked, they may have asked you for advice on relationships. They may have asked you for advice on family issues, on school. What I want you to think about what do most people always ask you about? What is it? It could be relationships, love, all of this stuff, or it could be you are a top salesperson and they know that. So they know that you are the person that they need to come to with a sales question because you studied sales. Something along those lines, but you want to think about what they are already asking you because it's a lot easier to build upon what people already see you as an expert as rather than trying to just pull something out of the sky. You can still do it, but it is going to prove a little bit more difficult. What can you talk about for hours? You can probably tell now that I'm very passionate about branding. I'm very passionate about business. I can talk about this stuff for literal hours. You throw any question at me, I'm going to be able to answer it and I'm gonna provide you with a clear answer. I'm gonna provide you with clarity on what it is that you're asking me. And I can talk about it, like I said, for hours because I'm passionate about it. This is something that I live. This is something that I've studied. Back in college, I studied marketing and technology management. These are things, concepts that I've studied. And then this is also something that I'm just passionate about, being that I enjoy helping so many people do what I do. So think about, number one, what are people always asking you about? And number two, what can you talk about for hours? Because even though people are asking you about it, that may not necessarily mean that you enjoy it. But if you can talk about it for hours, that likely means that there is some passion there, that you enjoy some aspect of it. So you want both of these to be a piece that is there as well. And then lastly, what do people already see you as an expert on? This is something that I've already stated, but I feel like each of us already have identified some aspect of expertise within us. The problem is that people have this preconceived notion of what an expertise is or an expert is. They think an expert can only be someone who is selling information or they know a lot about something related to business or maybe technology or the legal field. We think very narrow when it comes to what, who is an expert, what is an expertise. But I'm sure you have heard about people being relationship experts, meaning that they have gone through so many relationships and they now want to teach other people how to conquer or be happy and fulfilled in their own relationships. You hear about love coaches. You hear about love experts. You hear about all of these different types of people who claim that they are an expert on something, right? You could be an expert on cooking. That's a chef. That is information that you have that you can now sell to other people. So really, when you're thinking about, okay, what do people already see me as an expert on? What do people tell you that you're really good at? What do people come to you and they ask you questions over, they ask you to do? Maybe it's to cook a certain meal. At that point, then you may be an expert in that particular meal, or you may be an expert in cooking really good meals. You could be an expert in relationships. You could be an expert in business or branding. It all just depends. But I want you to really think about these three pieces of what are people always asking about? What can you talk about for hours? Because that is your passion. And then what do people already see you as an expert on? Meaning they already know that you have that knowledge within your head. So there's really isn't even an aspect of truly selling to them because they're already sold because they know you and they know that you have that expertise. Does this make sense? Does this piece make sense? Do these questions make sense? If this makes sense, I want you to drop a letter P for precious in the chat. <laughs> these three questions. Perfect.
hello everyone precious's line is quite is breaking but she will join us soon just hold on a bit precious will be with us shortly i think there was a slight challenge with the network great so precious is back yeah precious you're muted Hello, Precious. You're muted. Perfect. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Perfect, thank you. I'm so sorry, I don't know what happened with that. Okay. Let me get back to sharing my screen and then we can hop right back where we left off. That was very, very weird. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we were on the aspect of, excuse me, let me get started with this. So we were on part three of step one, of step one with getting started with entrepreneurship, with infopreneurship. We were on step, part three of step one. Determine who it is that is best suited for your information that you are selling. So this goes back to earlier what I was saying about having a niche market. Everyone is not going to love what you do, who you are, and the information that you are providing. It is not going to resonate with everyone. So you need to understand who is the information that I want to sell, who will it resonate most with. So for me, when I think about branding, right, and where I am now with brand strategy, and I help small business owners, I know that brand strategy, the way that I frame my services, this is something that small business owners and young professionals want, because I know the desire that they have of to make a greater impact or, or have a greater sphere of influence and increase the value that they're pushing out to other people. That is who is best suited for my services. It means that those people already have some type of value within them, they're just ready to tap into it. So I do not target people who don't understand who their, what their value truly is. I can help you to identify it or help you to refine it, but I can't help you to just create value. So those people have to already have value. So it's understanding that you have to know who is best suited for the information that you need to sell so that you can make sure that you are framing all of your marketing, all of your content, everything that you say for that particular person. And when I say determine who it is that is best suited for, I want you to pick one person. Because usually when we think about target audience and target market, we like to think about this group of people, right? We think about a large segment of people and that makes it really hard because then we feel like, okay, well, I don't wanna leave anybody out. So I wanna target everybody. Pick one person. If you could describe the perfect person that you would want to work with to help transform their life through infopreneurship in the way that you are giving the information, who would it be? What are their habits? What are their emotions? What's their lifestyle? What are they doing right now? What is their mindset? What problem are you helping them to solve? These are all aspects of what you want to understand when you're determining who your information is best suited for. So again, your target market cannot be everybody. It just cannot. We understand right with tissue. Like I, I gave the example of shoes earlier. Everybody wears shoes, but there are different companies 
that give you shoes. You have Nike, you have Jordan, and then you may have like Tom's or Sperry's. They target different people, different aspects of the community, even though everybody wears shoes. So you cannot target everybody. Understand that your target market cannot be everyone. So I want to just give a quick story into back when I was in college and how I got started with entrepreneurship way back when, with infopreneurship way back when. So back in college, how I got started with branding, I was at my university and I was studying as stated marketing and technology management. And when I was studying that, I then, I was in the business school as well. So I needed to get internships during the summers and during the school year so that I can begin building my expertise or my experience in that area. But even furthermore, I was also a leader on campus. So being that I was a leader on campus, there were already a number of people who knew just from speaking with me that number one, I could help them with their brand because I didn't even know I could help them with their brand, but they asked me for help with their brand. And then even furthermore, I would get asked to speak about who, who you are, how do you really identify your true value? And when I began to get asked to speak on those things, you can see here in the bottom right, I was uh, actually hosting a panel. In the top, I was doing a keynote. On the far right, on the far left, excuse me, I was actually giving another keynote at a different organization. And then down below is where I'm actually helping with resumes. So when I got started in branding, I actually started out by helping my peers, so other college students, other university students, how can they refine their resume to be better? Because they saw that my resume was top notch. They saw the opportunities that I was getting, whether it was internships, leadership experiences, trips, what have you, they saw all of they, they, those opportunities and they wanted in. And that is really how I got started with branding. I just had a couple of friends around me say, hey, can you help me get my LinkedIn and my resume in order? And back in college, between my undergraduate degree as well as my graduate degree, I was then helping college students brand themselves in a professional way. How do you brand yourself for your career, to get prepared for your career? So I was doing resumes, I was helping out with cover letters, I was doing LinkedIn revamps, all of these little services. But I wanna make one thing very clear. When I graduated from university and stepped into my full-time career, I pivoted my business because I understood that for the goals and where that I'm looking and where I'm looking to take my business and how my own information and knowledge and expertise has evolved, I wanted to then target business owners rather than students. And it's understanding that back in college, I had this, this very specific segment of college students, professional college students who are looking to gain internships and get seen. And now I've now switched over into I'm helping business owners build the strategy for their brand and their business so that, can, so that they can be seen by more individuals, more people within their target audience. So I just wanted to make it very clear that this is how really infopreneurship comes together. You wanna identify what people were already asking you for help on. For me, back in college, this was resumes, this was LinkedIn, this was interview prep. That's what people were already asking me for help on and I actually enjoyed doing it back then. I enjoyed helping people to revamp their LinkedIn. I enjoyed all of this. So then that is actually then when I started to say, you know what, since so many people are asking me for this service, since so many people are asking me about this, how about I just start charging? I'm gonna charge 25 bucks here, maybe 40 bucks there. And that is really how I got started or got my foot in as an infopreneur. So, getting started with infopreneurship and diving into step two. Step two. Step two, you have to choose your mode of delivery, meaning how will your information be provided to your identified audience? So if you notice with me, I provide my information to my audience via webinars and workshops like this, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching but there are numerous ways that you can actually deliver the information that you are trying to sell to other people, that you are trying to provide to other people so that you can help make an impact in their lives. And we're gonna go through what each of those pieces are. So there are seven types of infopreneurs, seven types of infopreneurs. The first are online course creators. 
you've probably seen examples of this maybe on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, what have you, someone who has made an online course. An online course meaning that this is the particular topic that I'm talking about and I may have a series of videos that you can go through and you can purchase from me that will then dub you or give you the information that you are now seeking. They've created a course and they packaged it into something and they're selling that course to other people online. That is one type of infopreneur. The second is author. You can be an author of an actual tangible book or you can be an author of an ebook. But again, you're just placing your information within the book and that is how you are then selling to other people. Three, niche bloggers. Niche meaning you are blogging for a very particular segment of people. I'm sure you've seen bloggers that, um, like mom bloggers, people or women that blog about motherhood and how do they raise their children and what they're feeding their children. That's a niche blogger. That is an infopreneur that is selling information specifically in the form of a blog. Pressures will continue shortly. I think there's a break in the network, but I hope we are we are all enjoying what we are learning so far. And and yes, I hope we are all enjoying it. Let me know. Let me know. Just give me a thumbs up. She'll be back shortly. It's a slight glitch in the network okay great great precious will join us shortly trying to fix it up for her so just be on be on be on hold and precious will be with us shortly shortly we apologize for the break in the network but then just keep following she will be with us shortly Okay, she's back then. She's back now. So precious. Yeah. Great. So precious is back. Let's let's continue. So Yeah. Yeah, you've been unmuted, precious. Hello precious, you've been unmuted. So we can continue. Oh, really? No, I don't think so. Now I am Great. unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. Um, I want to apologize to all of the participants that are here. I'm not sure what's going on with Zoom. It keeps kicking me out. Um, so... I'm going to get started. I'm going to try to run through this just so that I can stop sharing because I don't know what's exactly kicking me out. We only have about five or six more slides and then we can hop into Q&A. Um, but I'm sorry about that. So. But then, precious is still back. Perfect. So can you all hear me and can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. Let's get get through this before it kicks me out again. <laughs> okay, so seven types of infopreneurs. We have course creators. We have authors. 
we have course creators, we have authors, we have niche bloggers, we have niche podcasters, we have niche bloggers, speakers. So what I'm doing now, speaking with you all, people who are charging to go to conferences and workshops and panels and speak on the expertise that they've identified. Vloggers are pretty much the same, like I've already explained to you, bloggers and podcasters. Bloggers do this, bloggers give their information in written form, podcasters give it in audio form, and vloggers give it in video form. Now speakers, as stated, they are charging to speak at conferences, workshops, and things like that. And then lastly, these are just coaches, consultants, and thought leaders. And we kind of bucketed these into one simply because they're pretty much the same thing. They are helping people likely one-on-one -on -one or through their content with the information. So if I were to tell you the exact pieces that I've been, the infopreneur, the type of infopreneur um, that I've been, I have a blog, I have a podcast, I have a YouTube, I I've been uh, paid to speak at different conferences and workshops. And then as stated, I am also a coach. I'm considered a thought leader within branding. So I have nearly all of these types of infopreneur, infopreneurship um, down pat. So really when you're getting started, I just want you to choose one. When I got started, I just started with my blog. That was all I had. And as I began to pick up and build my audience, build my community, that blog then turned into a vlog. Then it turned into a podcast and it continues to evolve. But don't try to do all of these at once because it's very likely that you can overextend yourself. So step three with getting started into infopreneurship, brand yourself. As a brand strategist, I have to say this, but you have to understand that as an infopreneur, you are the product like you are what you are selling so you have to brand yourself correctly so that you attract the right people and then even furthermore market your information so unlike in entrepreneurs infopreneurs have no choice but to be the face of their brand and that is one of the primary differences between entrepreneurship and infopreneurship infopreneurs are the face of the brand when you came or you were signing up for this particular webinar, you likely saw my face and you, and you bought into it. You may have looked me up. You may have seen my website. You may have seen my Instagram. You may have seen any of this and you said, you know what? I want to go to that. You bought into it because of me and my expertise. There wasn't an external brand like Nike or Jordan, like, like those that you bought into you had to buy into me and my own name. So that is the importance and honestly, the very last step that you have to take when you're wanting to get started with infopreneurship. You have to have a solid personal brand in order to get started, you must. So when we look at the three components of really getting into branding yourself, and I like to say building brand authority, right? What is authority? What is brand authority, number one? Brand authority is pretty much your likability and the trust that people have in you. How much do they trust you on a particular topic? Meaning the particular topic that you chose earlier in our presentation and you said, okay, this is my expertise. You have an authoritative voice and you can actually help or, help or influence people to make decisions, whether that decision is to change their life, change their business, or a decision to actually purchase something from you. But you have that authority, your brand has that authority to do that. Does this make sense? If brand authority in the last few things that we have spoke about makes sense, I want you to drop a number two in the chat just so that I know you're still with me. I know we've had some technical difficulties, but just drop a number two in the chat if you're still with me and you understand the concept that I'm saying of brand authority. Brand authority and these three steps to really getting into infopreneurship. Brand authority is that trust. It's the likability. It's your ability to make somebody else make a decision. It is that influence that you have. So when we think about the three components of brand authority, if you're taking notes, continue to take notes because this is where it, it really gets good. I love this piece here. Getting into brand authority. The number one piece that you have to have with brand authority is credibility. Credibility meaning do you have a degree on this? Do you have years of experience? Have you, um, have you gone and you've done an online course? You've done a certification, a credential? What is that credibility?
credibility that you have on this particular topic. In order to have that brand authority, you have to have the credibility. So if we look at me as an example, the credibility that I have on branding is that I've studied marketing. I've helped more than 100 people help like build their brands. That is the credibility that I've given you. The credibility is also seen if you may have looked at my Instagram, my website, my LinkedIn, that showed you credibility in the form of, oh, she is actually giving out tangible information, giving out good information, valuable information about branding and what she says she is an expert on across all platforms. So number one, you have to have that credibility. Number two, you must have a community. This goes back to our niche market, but any type of brand authority figure has identified a specific community that they serve. You are creating a community for people to come together and to learn together about that particular topic that you're helping them to gain knowledge on. So you have credibility and you have a very clear and distinct community. The third piece that we have is social proof. Now, what is social proof? Social proof is more of an intangible concept that some people, um, it's, it's hard for some people to grasp. But when you think about social proof, I want you to think about, let's say that you are scrolling through Instagram and there is a business owner on there and they are saying that they can help you to increase your sales for your business. Immediately, what do you do? You're gonna click on their profile. You're gonna click on their profile and you're gonna go to see how many followers do they have? Are people actually engaging with them on the topic of sales? That is social proof. That is going to see how many people already are there. Social proof is saying how many people have I've already helped? How many people are already following me? What is that, or what does that online presence look like? Social proof is pretty much just the numbers of it all meaning you are pushing the numbers of how many people have you helped, how many books have you sold, how many people are on your newsletter, how many subscribers do you have? Those are the numbers for social proof that pretty much make other people want to buy into it because social proof pretty much means that, okay, I wanna do what the group does. So if I go on Instagram and let's say, I feel like we all, we all know Beyonce. If I go on Instagram and I see that 10 million people are following Beyonce, I'm going to want to follow her too, because I want to know why 10 million people are following her. I want what the other 10 million people are seeing or they have from her. That is social proof. So when we think about these three components of brand authority and building brand authority, you must have credibility. You must have a community and you must have social proof in order to be a true authoritative figure within your industry. Within your industry, you must do that. And these are the pieces that are going to really drive you building your personal brand for you to get started into entrepreneur, into infopreneurship. Is this making sense? Do these three make sense? Drop a three in the chat if this makes sense. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We see those coming through. Now, when we think about the three steps that we've now gone over of getting into entrepreneurship, what did we say? Number one, we said you have to choose your information. What information are you going to be selling or giving to others? What is your expertise? Choose that, identify that. Then you wanna get into identifying the actual mode of delivery. How are you going to give them this information? Is it going to be in a book? Is it going to be in a blog, a vlog, a podcast? Did you create an online course? I want you to identify the one way that you are going to get started with actually delivering or giving that information out to others. A very easy way to get started is pretty much just putting information on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and just starting to make statuses around that particular topic. That is the easiest way for you to really begin building that idea of infopreneurship around yourself. And then lastly, as stated, you want to develop a sense of brand authority. You want to be an authoritative figure within your industry. You want people to be able to come to you and they like you. They trust you. They trust you on this topic. They trust that you have the information that you are claiming that you have. So when we bring all of these three steps, these three pieces together, this is really pretty much what creates infopreneurship. You have your information, you have how you're going to get it out to people and who you're going to give it to, and you have a personal brand. 
those are the three. So when you're looking to get started with an infopreneurship and really monetize your expertise, these are the three pieces that you should really zone in on in order to get started and begin getting your feet wet within this particular realm. So I want to look back right into into what we were talking about earlier with our goals. How do we do on our goals. We said we wanted to define our we define infopreneurship and the key differentiating factor between entrepreneurship. Do you feel like we did that. If you feel like we did that drop a number one in the chat. We defined infopreneurship and we identify the key differentiating factors that it has between entrepreneurship. If you feel we've done that, drop a number one. Our second goal was to actually understand the various types of infopreneurs. I gave you seven types, seven types of different infopreneurs in ways that you can get started with an infopreneurship. If you feel like we've successfully checked this goal off and achieved this goal, drop a number two in the chat. Let me see how many ones and twos that we have. We defined infopreneurship, we understand the different types of infopreneurs, and we walked through the three steps to getting started with infopreneurship. If you feel like you completely understand we, the, the three steps to getting started in infopreneurship, identifying the information, identifying your mode of delivery, and then building a personal brand, if you feel like you understand those and we walk through those, drop a number three in the chat. How did we do on our goals? Do you think that we achieved our goals? Did I help? I hope that I helped. I hope that through all of the technical difficulties, you were still able to gain some value out of all of this. So the three steps to really getting started with infopreneurship. So it looks like based on all of the messages that we have within the chat that we achieved our goals. We understand what infopreneurship is and we're really learning how to monetize our expertise. So to really help you jumpstart all of this, I want you to understand what your brand currently is. Because infopreneurship begins with a personal brand. You have to have that personal brand in place. So this is a free worksheet that I've created for you to really get started with understanding what is the strength of my personal brand. So I've created a brand audit worksheet that allows you to rate yourself and determine how strong is your personal brand. So you can actually access this, um, this worksheet by navigating to this link. It's www.bit.ly slash brand audit worksheet. And that is how you can gain access to this. You will get the worksheet and then you will also get some additional resources via email from me related to how do you get started in business, building your business, what do you need to know before getting started, all of that good stuff, I provide all of that. But if you navigate to this link, this is where you can actually access that information. And thank you all for sticking with me, for sticking with me through the technical difficulties. We can actually now um, hop into questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'll drop the, I'll drop the link to, to the brand audit worksheet in the chat. But I'm, I'm here for questions, so Rachel, if anyone wants to um, navigate questions or figure out how we want to do that, just let me know and I'll, I can answer any questions that anyone may have. I know you all are muted, so if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat as well. Perfect. Yes. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat. We can get started with answering those. Um, I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you have. So we have a question from John. He says, great presentation. What are the key subjects, areas, or themes that I speak to? Um, I'm going to, I, I don't, I'm not very clear on your question, but I'm going to assume that you're meaning like the topics that I focus on. So some of the topics that I focus on, number one is personal branding. Um, what we've already spoke about today. I speak on building brand authority. Um, building brand authority pretty much means what we've already went over. How do you create trust? How do you get people to trust and like you? And then I also speak on how do you leverage LinkedIn? So if you want to connect with me, feel free to connect with me. I'll drop my at 
my handle name everywhere. It's the same Precious C Price on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Feel free to drop that everywhere. But yes, I help people in the realm of personal branding, brand authority, and LinkedIn, like leveraging LinkedIn to really build that brand authority. We have a question from Isaac. Okay, wonderful presentation. How, how do you make money from blogging? So making money from blogging, when you want to make money from blogging, that means that you need to then create advertisements within your blogs. That is how you make money from it. You don't necessarily make money from just creating the blog and charging people to read. That's not usually how blogs work, but bloggers make money from the advertisements that they place on their website because they have a specific authority within their industry to get people to buy into something. So to give you a tangible example, going back to our example of women who blog about motherhood, usually you'll have companies like um, stroller companies or like baby cribs and bassinet companies asking can they advertise on that website or within their blog because they know that mothers are reading that blog and they're going to buy into that because that is their particular audience. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that answers your question. Um, we have another question from Chisholm to restructure a brand with little conversion with little conversion rate. Would it be ideal to shut down slash delete posts and apply your structure super presentation and so much clarity. Thank you. Number one chosen and number two. Um, if you so you're saying that there's little conversion weight. I would definitely say I wouldn't necessarily say shut down, but I would say archive all of those posts archive and delete the post and get started with exactly the format that I'm giving you. Because this is going to help you to do it in the right order. Usually people, when they get started, they're getting started and they're immediately trying to sell to people. And the example that I like to give is like, when you immediately try to sell to people and you haven't built a relationship, you haven't identified who your community is, it's like you're walking up, it's like you're walking up to me and you ask me to marry you. You just walk up to somebody and you ask them to marry them. You didn't, you didn't take them on a date. You didn't, you, like, you didn't get to know them. You immediately just asked for something. You asked for the sale. That is how it is when you literally just go online and you try to push the sale to people without building a community, building authority, and building trust. So yes, I would say if you are really, if you're getting little conversion, you're getting no engagement, restructure the brand. It's understanding that a brand is ever evolving. It's going to constantly change. It's going to constantly, you know, evolve into what it is. When I told you guys back in college, I was doing resumes. I no longer do resumes. I'm still within the branding space, but I've transitioned into brand strategy for businesses and professionals because I'm no longer serving college students. So understand that that brand can evolve. Don't be resistant to the, the evolution of your brand. Go along with it, follow what's working. If you see that what you're doing isn't working, switch it up and change it, absolutely. Um, do I have any link or slides or how can I help with an individual, with an individual build a good resume? Um, unfortunately, I no longer do resumes. Uh, so I cannot help with that. But if you go on my website, preciouscprice.com, I'll drop the link in the chat. You may be able to find the old blog that I created on having a good resume. And then I would also say, connect with me on LinkedIn. I do release tips um, regarding how do you improve that resume and all of that. But I no longer help or provide services uh, for, for any resumes or anything like that. What are some challenges I faced when I began with infopreneurship? I would say the primary challenge that I faced was trying to actually choose my niche market. Um, I am somebody who I feel like I want to impact, I want to help, I want to provide value to everybody. Um, so when I got started, I was like many people when they get started and I did not have a clear market that I wanted to target. I did not understand who that clearly was. And because I didn't understand that, the messaging, the, um, the messaging of my brand was unclear. The content that I was releasing was unclear. So I was attracting everybody, but then when they would come and they would talk to me and try to get services, it's like, okay, well, I didn't necessarily think that this is what it was. Like I was attracting people, but they weren't necessarily buying into it because I wasn't clear on the outcome that I've provided. 
So it goes back to what we said in, in the slides about what is the outcome that you provide. You wanna be very clear on the outcome that you can give people. I tell people that I help you build brand authority. The outcome that you get from that is you get an increased level of influence and impact on other people. You'll get more visibility. That is what I can help you do. If you are trying to do anything else other than that, I cannot help you. And that is what you have to get clear on. A lot of people feel like when they get very specific with their audience, um, they're leaving people out. They might be leaving money on the table, but I assure you 100% the clearer that you get on your audience, the better clarity, the more specific that you get, the best people, the more sales you will get, the more people you will attract that are actually looking for what you have. You, every single time that you are in business, you're providing information, whether you're an entrepreneur or an infopreneur, you are giving someone a promise, right? You're promising them something. But when you are unclear on who you serve, that promise then becomes clouded or diluted. You want to be very clear on that promise so that you attract people who want what you are promising to provide. How much capital do you need to get started? That is the good thing with uh, infopreneurship. Actually, who, who asked this question? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, that is the good thing with infopreneurship. It actually takes little to no money to get started. So I told you that I, I started my blog first, like the first type of infopreneurship that I started in was blogging. Um, when I started my blog, I didn't spend any money at all. I spent time. I spent time building my website, um, but even my website was free. There are different uh, platforms that allow you to build free websites on their platform. So let's say MailChimp, um, Wix, those are just two of them, but it was absolutely free. So even when you think about um, any type of infopreneurship, speakers, all of that, your cost to entry into the industry is very, very low, if, if anything at all. When you speak, you're just talking. This is completely free for me to do. I, I spent no money doing this. As you then become larger and you get a greater influence, of course you are going to, um, you are going to, I guess, find more expenses because then you wanna market your business better. You wanna market your services and your information better. But starting out, you, you don't need any money at all to get started in infopreneurship, none at all. John asks, what is the role of pro bono engagements in building a profitable brand as a speaker? What should you look out for and what should be the indicators that should help you decide whether a speaking engagement should be paid or pro bono? This is a fantastic question, John. Um, so to answer the first part of your question as far as the role of pro bono engagements, that is to build your brand authority. Pro bono engagements help you to build social proof. People want to know that you've already done it before. They want to know that you have reviews, that they can trust that you're going to give them the promise that you're saying that you can provide. So when you're doing pro bono engagements, for instance, when I started speaking, I started out with pro bono engagements because I needed videos of me speaking. I needed photos of me speaking because that is social proof. That helps other people who down the line will consider paying me, they'll see that, okay, she's done it before and now they have more trust in actually giving me a certain amount of money to speak at their event. That is the role that pro bono engagements have. They allow you to like build that, build that authority within the industry. So I would say do not um, completely throw out the idea of doing pro bono engagements. Pro bono engagements are good because they help you to get feedback on the topics that you're speaking about. So for instance, right now, like this for me is pro bono. This is the first time that I'm doing this particular presentation. I've done variations of it before, but this is the first time I'm doing this particular presentation. And though we had a few technical difficulties, you all have helped me greatly with understanding, okay, what information should I put into my slides so that they don't ask, you know, more questions or what can, what can I add? How much more value can I add? Is this even worth it? You all are showing me that it is worth it and you still enjoyed it. So that is the value of pro bono speaking engagements. And your second piece was what should you look out for? What should you be indicators to help you decide whether you should do a paid or pro bono speaking engagement? This goes back to understanding your audience. All of the pro bono speaking engagements that I do are only for my very specific audience. So my audience, like I already said, is entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, business owners, and people who are looking to build brand authority. All of you on this call are interested in building brand authority. 
So that is why I did this engagement pro bono, because at that point, you're going to now become a part of my community and you're going to continue to follow up with me. You're going to continue to try to find value. You're, you're now going to become a follower of mine. And then that in turn feeds into that social proof. And then later down the line, once you probably, um, you may become an entrepreneur yourself, an infopreneur yourself, you may then want my branding services. And because I did this pro bono speaking engagement early on, you're going to know that I'm the person that you should reach out to when you're actually ready to pay somebody for branding services. That is the value of actually doing pro bono speaking engagements. So be very strategic about it because you can very easily uh, wear yourself out or exhaust yourself doing so many pro bono speaking engagements, but choose them wisely and understand the value that you can still get. Even if you're not getting paid monetarily, you can add more people to your email list. All of these different pieces, right? And I just wanna put this link back here for those of you that may have missed it for the brand audit worksheet. And we'll continue answering questions. What is the best social media to use in infopreneurship? Again, this goes back to your audience. Understand where your audience is. My audience um, primarily is on LinkedIn. So if you connect with me on LinkedIn, you'll, know, you'll notice that that's where I have the greatest um, amount of influence, the greatest amount of followers, the best engagement, because I, like, I help professionals and entrepreneurs and business owners. And that is LinkedIn is the platform that they sit on. Now, if you're selling information related to, let's say like beauty, you're teaching people how to do their makeup, that may be Instagram because it is a more visual platform. Let me know if that makes sense. Um, okay, okay, final question from John. Um, after how many years or how long into infopreneurship did I earn my first cash? This is to help some of us manage our expectations as we venture into this space. Great question. So I earned my first return, like I actually got my first check from infopreneurship. I started, so I started, I would say like in infopreneurship, I would say back in 2014, I received my first check in 20, I believe it was the end of 2015, maybe early 2016. And that is because I was doing this by myself. So I would say, yes, manage your expectations. You're not going to immediately make money, but it also isn't going to take you a year and a half, two years like it did me. Because you all are attending presentations like this that's helping you to understand the structure of how do you begin monetizing your expertise? How do you develop infopreneurship? I was just winging it. I didn't know what I was doing and I was doing a lot for free. And I'll be quite honest with you. A mentor told me that um, I was doing a lot for free for way too long. I would continue to do free things uh, for years without actually charging people what I thought that I was worth. Because I thought that, you know what? Nobody's going to pay that. I'm just going to give it to them for free. And they already trusted me. Once you build and solidify that trust, start charging. That's it. Once more, I would say once more than like 10 people begin asking you a, a particular question around a particular subject or expertise, start charging. Have your social proof in place, have your authority, have your personal brand together. And once you have all of that, start charging. It shouldn't take you that long, but it will take you time to build the authority, to get the social proof, to build your personal brand. But that is the only thing that takes time. It shouldn't take a ton of time from there to make money from it. It shouldn't take a long time at all. Perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, and I think that is the last question. If there are any more, feel free to drop them. Um, I have about, I'd say five more minutes. But if not, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. John, John, you are a gifted speaker, lively, very engagement. Your mastery of your trade is impressive. Thank you so much. Examples are relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Please, please, please. I would love to have you all a part of my community, a part of my network. So please connect on LinkedIn. And if you have not already, download the brand audit worksheet. Your brand is the foundation of everything, everything. Whether you want to be an infopreneur, entrepreneur, what have you, 
your brand is the foundation for everything. So you want to understand how your brand currently is. That brand audit worksheet is going to give you the exact areas of your brand that you need to work on. My name on LinkedIn is Precious C. Price. Um, but yes, that brand audit worksheet is going to give you exactly the pieces of your brand that you should be working on. So if you have not downloaded that, make sure that you download that as well. Oh, summary on how to build a community. So pretty much when we went over the aspect of community, we didn't necessarily go on building a community. We just said that you needed a community. Now, when you're looking to actually get started with building a community, this means that you are just giving out free information and you're creating a dialogue. If you want an example of how to build community, I would say go back and look through my post on Instagram, my post on LinkedIn, and you will see how I, like the methods that I use through content to build a community. But you really want to um, make sure that your community is official as well. Have an email list. Have an email list. So that link, when you download the brand audit worksheet, you will be added to my email list. And that is how I have an official community. So if you're looking to really start developing that community, push out value and then get people to sign up for either a Facebook group that you created or your newsletter and be a subscriber. That is how you officially built that community. I hope that answers your, your question, Chisholm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rona. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel, is there anything else? Um, I think this is it. it um, if you have more questions, you can drop it. If not, we'll have to reach out to me. Way. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. If you have additional questions, reach out to me on Instagram. Um, if you have any additional questions, I'll just drop those in there one last time. And then, yes, thank you all so much for today. This was so much fun. You all are so engaging. So, so engaging. The questions were amazing. I'll put that privately. Let me okay. that to everybody. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you all. Well, um, it's looking like there are no more questions. So I am going to go ahead and drop. But thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to let Ignatius come in because I he made me aware my network is my um you guys are not able to hear me properly so i'm going to let him come in now all right thank you very much precious for such a great delivery we have really learned a lot from this insights you shared with us and it's a pleasure to learn from you I believe that whatever we've learned here will help us build a brand authority and gain that credibility in our community in as much as we build a social proof. And to be honest with you, I have really built or I've learned great things from you personally that I, I, I am putting into practice. And I'd like to say on behalf of GYLCD that it was great having you here and we hope to have you here again another time and our, our listeners will definitely connect to you on social media since you have great information to share with us and finally I'd say that you're an awesome speaker thank, thank you so you. much thank, thank you. you so much thank you all have a good rest of your afternoon, good rest of your Sunday. Um, and again, if you've connected with me, you'll hear from me. Um, likely tonight, you'll hear from me. You'll hear from me soon. So perfect. But bye, okay, everyone. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much, Precious. So to everyone, if you enjoyed today's session, just give your comments in the chat session. Let me know how you enjoyed today. Just share your impression how did you enjoy today's career talk session just share it in the chat session i want to i want to see what you what you learned just share with me
just type in the chat session what you learned from today's great. Chisom says success, awesome. Princess says first time and I love it, thanks. Chisom Obiru says refresher course, wow, nice. So drop your comments. I want to know what, 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 what. Yes, Kofi Livingston says it was great. Yes, it was really great. I learned a lot myself as well. And I, 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 I hope we tell our friends to join the next time. Yeah, Nana Fama says the presentation was excellent and insightful. Yes, it, was, it really was. I, 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 I bet you it was insightful. Yes, so drop more comments. Um, um, I want you to share your comments and then we go from there. Yeah, so Shadrach Men says educative. Thanks for the information. Yes, so Galaxy Prime says intellectually sound presentation. Azaglo Alex says great output. Yes, it was a great session. I would say that she has dropped her social media handle so connected her she has a lot of information to share with you so just join and learn so she's on instagram she's on linkedin so you can just follow her and learn a lot from her yes roma says though i came late i, I said i had was really enriching and getting okay yeah it was educated john wonder is asking do we have another presentation or just the was informative. Yes, next week we have another session with another speaker. So every week we bring you different speakers just so that you build yourself and you be become informed and practice what you learn. It's not just about listening to what our speakers share, but then it's about practicing it and making or bringing about change in your community. Yes, so Deborah says, learned a lot. I'm a food blogger, so I've learned to identify my niche, get my social proof, and also get a vibrant community. Awesome. Great, great. Thanks, Deborah, for joining. It was great having you here. So back to what I was saying. Based on what you learn from this talk session we are having, it's actually supposed to help you cause change. That is the essence of global young leaders and career development as we are an organization that helps empower young Africans to cause change and development in Africa, as well as what we do is to train and coach young individuals as a way of helping them follow their passion. Our vision is to hold conferences annually in various African countries to talk about present issues faced in Africa and find solutions to it. Our drop our website here, if you don't know about our website, you can just go to our website and read about GYLCD. So I'll, I'll drop the website here shortly. Okay, great. Rachel has dropped the website. So you can visit our website, www.gylcd.org. And if you want any information, you can send us an email at info at gylcd.org just send us an email and if you want to join our community we have a whatsapp platform to help you someone says western do i join in late for the first time her presentation is good let's change the world by engagement from zambia awesome. so back to what i was saying we will have this the next next week we have another speaker who is also on the so do make the point to join next week mark your calendar every sunday we have this talk sessions and our flyers will be shared on our social media platforms just follow at gylcd and you would be updated just mark your calendar same time next week we have another talk session so Precious has dropped her social media handles and then her brand audit worksheet. Please and please and please make sure you be a doer of what she shared. 
do an audit of your brand and know where you stand, identify your community, build credibility, and build social proof. And she also stated that we should choose our information right. We should identify the mode of delivery, develop a sense of brand authority. So I hope that we've learned a lot. And I, I, I see a lot of comments here. The comments are really amazing. It was great having you all. My name is Ignacio Sawute, and I hope you join in next week. I would leave you with the quote of the day. I started with the quote of the day. I'll leave you with the quote of the day again from Bill Owens. It says, true leadership, true leadership lies in guiding others to success in ensuring that everyone is performing at their best, doing the work they are pledged to do and doing it well. I repeat, true leadership lies in guiding others to success in ensuring that everyone is performing their best, doing the work they are pledged to do and doing it well. Thank you so much. It was great having you all. And I believe without any further comments, we would sign out. But we apologize for the technical issues that were encountered at the beginning of the talk session. We hope that next week all these things are resolved. It was great having you. Thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your day. So we can all sign out now. Thank you so much. So don't forget to tell a friend to tell another friend to join next week. Thank you all. Thank you all. It's time to sign out. Thank you.